Lots of injuries week 15, which, mean there's, which means there's plenty to talk about in the waiver wire show. I'm Dustin. Welcome to Fantasy Smack Talk. Hopefully y'all are still alive in your fantasy playoffs. If not, thanks for still watching. But if you still want some action, get in the daily. Use promo code FST. Follow the link in the card or in the description. Deposit five more dollars. They'll give you an entry to a free game. Then you can watch Brent's video later in the week. And he'll give you some picks to help win you some money. Let's talk about the waiver wire. Must add in all leagues for running backs. Tim Hightower. I mean, if there was, <laughs> if you needed any other questions answered, I mean, they, they answered everything for us in terms of what we needed to know for fantasy in terms of the Spiller-Hightower split with who's getting the touches. Hightower's the man. Ingram's done. Hightower's going to have volume probably the last two weeks of the season if they can you know, keep the games close. Love his upside. He looked pretty good. He needs to be owned in all leagues. Only on about 50% of leagues. I was surprised by that considering how favorable the reports were towards the end of last week. Denard Robinson's the next guy. TJ Yeldon owners, tough blow. You know, the extent of that injury hasn't been released yet, but definitely looks like Yeldon is, is I would say, doubtful at this point for Week 15. And he had, and he would have had a nice matchup, too, against Atlanta. So you're going to want to try to get Denard Robinson on your team. But here's what I want to say about Robinson. They drafted Yeldon because they didn't trust Robinson as an every-down back. So someone else is going to factor in. Yeldon, or Robinson should lead the committee and touches but there will be another running back in the mix I don't think it's going to be strictly just Robinson back there Brandon Bolden is next only on in 10% of leagues LeGarrette Blount got hurt the extent of that injury hasn't been released either but Bolden should be the the heavy favorite for the early down work I think White will will continue to be kind of the passing running back so Bolden could have some short-term value if Blunt misses some time now i got to talk about the Seattle situation. Real tough blow for Rawls owners. I mean, that guy looked like he was going to carry some people to fantasy championships. And now it's just a mess with, uh, with Juwan Harris and Bryce Brown. Harris got a decent amount of touches week 14. Didn't look all that good. Bryce Brown, we know that he has big play potential. He's had good games in the past. But there's a reason why he's <laughs> not playing right now. So... It's going to be a mess. M monitor the situation throughout the week. I mean, whoever gets the touches out there is going to have value. It doesn't look like Fred Jackson's value is going to change much. He's going to continue to be the third down guy. So whoever wins this job could have some value, but it's going to be it's going to be a scary start either way. Moving on for deeper league running backs, Bilal Powell. The guys looked amazing. I mean, they're using him, especially in PPR leagues. I do like this guy. I think he's he's a flex option at this point. He's been consistently involved since coming back from injury. I still like Bilal Powell. Ryan Matthews, I think, needs to be on the more leagues. Only on in about half of all leagues right now. He got dropped after he was out for all those weeks with the concussion. But it's time to pick him back up. Receiver, got a few people that I think are must-ads in all leagues. Ted Ginn Jr. I mean, say what you want to say about him. <laughs> but he's doing it. I mean, he's he has been nuts. Huge deep threat for Cam Newton when he catches the ball. And you can't ignore the production. I mean, I know it's Ted Ginn. Are you really going to pick him up and start in Week 15? I mean, it's scary. But again, it's. I mean, you look at what, you know, a lot of people, including myself, weren't necessarily believing Doug Baldwin a few weeks ago. And look at what he's done. So you just can't write it off. If, if, you, if, if you have any type of question marks at wide receiver and you're looking for a boomer bust type guy, Ted Ginn's your guy. Same thing can be said about Tyler Lockett. I mean, it's... Is it scary? Yes, but you can't ignore it. I mean, the big play potential is there. You know, he had the long touchdown, then he had a shorter touchdown. I mean, ever since the Jimmy Graham injury, Lockett has been consistently targeted. And I think he is a safe wide receiver three at this point with huge upside from week to week. And I like his matchup against Cleveland week 15. I think Lockett is huge upside. I think he's must add in all leagues. And then let's not forget about Willie Sneed. I mean, this guy was on pace for an amazing season. I think he was on pace for about 11, 1,200 yards before he got hurt. Looks like he's healthy again. He was back to being a target monster for Drew Brees. And one guy that I think is worth a look in deeper leagues is Jeremy Butler for Baltimore. I mean, they've been really searching for any type of weapons. And I think Butler is a guy that does have some upside. So I do think, you know, this is for deeper leagues, but I, I do think uh, Butler has some upside for... For week 15 and they have a matchup against the Chiefs 
which isn't terrible. I mean, Chiefs give up a lot of points to, to wide receivers, so he's not a bad option even for Week 15 and deeper leagues if you need help with receiver. My pickup and play quarterback, I'm going with Alex Smith. Again, they're playing the, they're in that Kansas City Ravens game. I think, <laughs> I know, it's Alex Smith. He's not that exciting of a quarterback to start, especially when your playoff life depends on it. But I mean, if you had, if you had a bye and you had Andy Dalton, or if you had Andy Dalton and you somehow still managed to win, Alex Smith is a guy that has been consistently above average all year. You get him in there, he's not going to lose you your matchup. That's why I want to talk about Alex Smith. He is a safe 15 to 20 point play with a little bit of upside there. So that's what he is. So that's why I want to talk about Alex Smith. Zach Ertz as a, as a tight end, he's getting healthy at this point. I do like his upside moving forward. You know, as long as he can stay out on the field. He's going to be a decent tight end for you. And then my pickup and play defense is Tampa Bay on a short week going up against the Rams. I don't necessarily like that they're on a short week, but the Rams offense, all they have is Gurley, and Gurley's banged up right now. It does look like he's going to play, but I just, I'm not afraid of that Rams offense. And Tampa Bay's D has shown some flashes this year. They've had some decent games, so not minding them as a pickup of play. Now, this is just a portion of the list. If you click on the link in the description, you can see the full list, see everyone's name, all my fancy write-up about the uh, different guys. If you got questions, post them in the forums, and good luck in your matchups.